groovy. Hey folks! This video is going to seemingly be about two different things, but they sort of come together at the end. I considered making two different vids, but ultimately decided on one longer one. In the background, you'll see some rain random Rainbow Six Siege gameplay from time to time, and that's going to become a bit more important in the second half of this vid. My last video went over my gaming impressions of the new Asus PG27UQ, which is an LCD that can do 4K at 144Hz. To put it bluntly, I love it. But I ran into an interesting challenge in what I think is a limitation of my Titan X Pascal GPUs. Specifically, I can't have the Asus 4K panel and two LG 4K 60Hz panels and an Elgato 4K 60 Pro capture card all connected and running at their maximum refresh and resolutions. Let's dig into this a little more and I'll show you what I mean. A couple of things to get out of the way first. One, I have two PCs in my office. One to play games on and one that I use for streaming to YouTube gaming. I'll henceforth refer to them as the gaming rig and the streaming rig. The streaming rig has the Elgato 4K60 Pro capture card in it which is connected to the HDMI output of my gaming rig's Titan X. While I'm playing, my gaming rig is cloning everything it's sending to the Asus 4K display over to the Elgato card in the streaming rig. There, it gets mucked together with the audio from my mixer, any overlays that I might need to add, plus my face cam. And then it's sent in all its 4K glory straight to YouTube gaming. The second is related to the first. I used to play and stream at 1440p. Prior to upgrading to 4K, I was using a 1440p display on my gaming rig and I had the same Elgato card configured as a 1440p capture, not a 4K capture. The key point here is that the gaming rig, to the gaming rig, the Elgato card just looks like another display, either a 1440p display or now a 4K 60Hz display. It neither knows nor cares that the Elgato card is actually a capture card, it just sees it as another display and treats it accordingly. Here's what the NVIDIA control panel looks like on the gaming rig before I enable the, the Elgato card. You can see it's connected here, but I have it disabled in the panel. Windows doesn't see it at all. Each of the three 4K displays are running at the respective maximum refresh rates of either 144Hz or 60Hz. Now let's enable the capture card. You can see here that the control panel thinks the, of the card before I've done any of my display cloning. It's just another 4K display that can do 60 Hertz. But there's a new problem. The Asus panel can't do 144 Hertz any longer. The NVIDIA driver or Windows or something has limited it to 120 Hertz. Interesting. It's not the capture card's fault either. If I disable one of the LG 4K displays, the Asus panel can once again run at 144 Hertz. Again, look to the NVIDIA control panel where I have one of those panels disabled. We can flick, flip over here to the resolutions tab and see 144 Hertz is now an option. I have a case open with NVIDIA to try and get to the bottom of this. I've written a blog post describing my thoughts on the matter, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. But to summarize, I think there's a hardware limit to the throughput of the NVIDIA card. And my gut tells me it's something at around or less than 64 gigabits per second. I'm not going to go through the math in this video, but it's explained in the blog entry. What's even more interesting is that if, if I disable SLI so that I have my two Titans are running in independent, I can power all four displays at their max refresh. All I have to do is move one of the LG displays to the second car and voila, everything works. But when running an SLI, you can't use the display ports on the non-primary card, so that's not really an option for me. Ultimately, I think if I want to run all the displays at their max resolution and refresh, I'm going to need another GPU, which is silly. But that's where the GT1030 comes in. As it turns out, the MSI, MSI has a GT1030 with one HDMI and one display port. It's a single slot, low profile card and it'll fit perfectly next to my, the video card here. The 1030 is a card that a lot of people chastise NVIDIA for making. 
even more so when they released that DDR4 version. But that doesn't matter in this instance. I don't need a super fast car that can po- card that can power games or whatnot. My Titans can handle that. This card will power both LG displays at 4K60. And look, it works just fine. Now, as you can see, I have all three LCDs and the 4K capture card running at the respective maximum refresh rates. And as long as I don't ask anything too demanding of the 1030, it'll be just fine. But this is where my next challenge comes in, and it's due to playing and streaming Rainbow Six Siege in 4K. I use OBS Studio on both my gaming rig to record videos and my streaming rig to do the streaming. In either case, I'm using the NVENC hardware, conto- hardware encoder, but doing so at silly high bit rates. I record the 4K vids at 75 megabits per second, and I stream to YouTube at their maximum allowed 51 megabits per second. One of the problems is that OBS is very dependent on the GPU for things other than the hardware encoder. It uses the GPU to assemble the video that it's going to record or stream, and that does cut into the GPU's available power for gaming. In most cases, the load that it causes is nearly zilch. But when you're pushing 4K at 140 FPS with Siege, it matters. I've completed a battery of tests using the built-in Siege benchmark. My goal is to get the video settings to their highest possible while maintaining an average of 140 frames per second in the benchmark. I figure that's a good compromise while playing. Here you can see the video settings that I have in Siege. It's running 4K at 144Hz. And on the graphics panel, textures are on ultra. Texture filtering is anisotropic 16 times. Level of detail is ultra. Shading quality is high. And shadow quality is medium. Everything else is either set to its lowest setting or off. I can't record the benchmark and show you the resulting 140 frames per second for reasons I'll get to get into in a moment. But here's the end of the run, 140.1 FPS average. Now let's explain why I can't get that same number while recording the benchmark. I'll actually show you the run. Watch the frame rate counter in the lower left corner and you'll see that it struggles to hit 140. In fact, It pretty much sticks to around 120 or less. And there are massive stutters. That's not your YouTube player stopping, nor have I stopped the video. That's recorded straight through OBS Studio. I never see that stuttering or massive number of frame drops, but it's clear as day in the video. And you can see that at the end of it, I lost a good 20 FPS average over the base run. Keep that in mind. Recording on this system in NVENC, 4K, 60 FPS is causing me to lose about 20 FPS in the Siege benchmark. Yuck. Why is this happening? You're going to see even more of it as we go through a few more tests. The culprit is the load on the two GPUs. When it hits 100%, OBS just can't deal with it and frames start getting dropped. But we haven't even talked about streaming yet. Let's get into that. The first test I'll show you is using software in OBS Studio and no extra capture hardware. A popular plugin for OBS called NDI allows OBS process on one machine to transmit everything it's seeing and doing over the network to an OBS process on another machine. And it works too. But we can run into the same challenges as we faced with the previous run when the GPU hits its max. Frames start getting dropped. What I'll show you here is the recording from the game machine on the left and the streaming machine on the right. You're clearly seeing the break in the screen. You'll also see things go out of sync. That's due to frames being dropped on each OBS process dealing with that independently. I apologize for the visual effect. It's not something I'm doing on purpose. No extra load is put on the already taxed graphics card, so I retain my 120 FPS average as before with the previous recorded run. But with the frames being dropped, that shows up on stream. Bad news. We can enable the 4K capture card 
on the streaming rig now and use OBS to project its preview screen over to that card. In other words, we're not cloning the made display, we're just using OBS to send its preview window. On the streaming rig, that OBS process can see it via the capture card and put it in the stream. Again, like the previous run, we're going to get out of sync because of the frames being dropped. And like the previous run, we're gonna see that on stream as well as in recording. But again, about 120 or so FPS. Not bad, but not good due to the drop frames. Now let's use the capture guard the way it's supposed to be used, by cloning the display over to it. The problem with doing that is first seen in the NVIDIA control panel when you do it. NVIDIA warns me that the SLI performance will take a hit with cloned displays. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens to the recordings. Pretty smooth, huh? As it turns out, there are nearly no drop frames doing it this way because interestingly, the load on the GPUs never hits look at the resulting frame rate, under 110. To save you the pain of watching the benchmark again, here's the final screen from the same test, but not recording on the gaming rig. In other words, I'm just recording it on the streaming rig. You can see the frame rate jumps back up a bit, but it still isn't great. This sucks. It sucks epically. I don't really think there's anything I can do about it, if I want to continue playing, recording, and streaming Rainbow Six Siege in 4K. If I knock the resolution down to 1440p, these problems all vanish because the GPUs aren't working nearly as hard. Also, if I play other games, such as Frostbite engined Battlefield 1 or 4, I have no problems with 140 frames per second while streaming, recording, or both. The Anvil Next engine underpinning Siege just is not as efficient as Frostbite is, and it shows when playing 4K. So what's the answer? A new pair of GPUs, that's what. But there isn't anything available right now that will work. I need whatever NVIDIA is cooking up for their next generation Titan X cards. Till then, I'm going to keep playing, streaming, and uh, recording Siege in 4K in less than optimal frame rates. It's still higher than 60, and in 4K, Siege is gorgeous. It's a compromise I'm willing to make. If you have any questions, suggestions, or ideas, leave them in the comments section below and I'll take a look. Thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you next time. Left. Friendly is victorious. Hostiles eliminated. Thank you.